Hello, I'm Steve Palladino. I'm going to go over one of the uh, calculators that I use for uh, estimating race power. Uh, it's more of an advanced calculator than some of the ones I've used, so that's why I'm uh, doing this presentation. Um, what I did is uh, I'm, I'm utilizing both the Rigel formula as well as the uh, equation for running effectiveness to uh, fine-tune a, a race power estimate. Uh, what I've done is in this, this uh, calculator, and I'm going to go over the, the creation of it so you can do this at home. Um, what I have uh, here is uh, input cells for uh, time, race time, or anticipated race time in hours, minutes, and seconds. Uh, then a, a cell over here that uses uh, this expression here, uh, this expression, to uh, convert it to seconds. Um, I'll give you just a second to take a look at that. Uh, so this is cell A2 is hours, minutes, and seconds. And we're going to go uh, exactly as you see here with that um, expression. Uh, that gives you seconds. There's also an input cell for the uh, individual's uh, FTP or CP, um, uh, and then a, a Rigel exponent um, that's appropriate for that particular individual, that duration of race, etc. Um, uh, then over here is a computational cell where uh, it's using the Rigel formula. Um, the, uh, basically utilizing uh, the uh, FTP, uh, the uh, uh, number of seconds divided by 3,000, which is uh, 50 uh, minutes, and then D2, the exponent of D2, which is a Rigel exponent. So there's the expression for that. And what that does is, is it computes the uh, power based on that Rigel exponent and that FTP that the person should hold for this particular time. Uh, the problem is, is that um, um, a person might estimate a, a time that is you know, too high or too low uh, for what they uh, uh, might run. And what we'll do is fine tune that estimate using the running effectiveness equation. So a couple more um, uh, input cells. One is the race distance. Uh, notice here that uh, in this example here, I have uh, 42,500 meters. That's because uh, this person's stride typically uh, records roughly about 1% uh, long. So this gives me more accurate. So I look at what their historic uh, stride measurements are um, uh, versus uh, certified race distance, and uh, I'll, I'll fudge a little bit to allow for that um, that uh, error. Um, also, there is a weight that this should be the stride weight of the individual. The stride weight uh, is entered here, and then we have this uh, cell, which is the, the, the computational cell which is basically the um, um, running effectiveness equation. It takes um, A7, uh, basically uh, that is the race distance, divided by E2, the race time in seconds. That's going to give you meters per second, and divides by uh, H2, which is this uh, race power based on that time, um, by uh, B7, which is the uh, the runner's weight. So it, it, what it does is it takes those various uh, data points, the, the time that you've entered, this power that was calculated from that time, uh, the distance and the weight, and, and it computes running effectiveness. This is where we fine tune it, because if we know or can estimate a running effectiveness for a runner, uh, then we fine tune it. For, let's say, say, for example, this runner uh, with all this data here, we're not going to change a thing. But let's say 
their typical running effectiveness in their marathon power tempos and longer tempo efforts or even other uh, races over half marathon let's say their their running effectiveness is 0 0.99 well we if we put this time in here this is the running effectiveness that this is uh, calculating for that power um, but what this is saying, if this is lower than that, then that means the person probably will run a bit faster. So we're going to, I come back here and I adjust this. I'm going to adjust it to oh, uh, 335. Enter that. And we can see now the running effectiveness is too high. So we come back and keep playing. It's, it's a little uh, toggling back and forth um, that we do. Um, so 340. There we go. We get really close. Three, uh, that's a little bit um, slow, so we're going to go 339.50. Boom. So we know this person's running effectiveness should be around 0 0.99. We didn't really know the time. We knew the FTP, but we, we had sort of a ballpark what time it might be. But now I, what I've done is I've gone through it and I've, I've played with this to get to running effectiveness 0 0.99. Uh, that would also adjust race power. So let me, I'm going to go back here. Let's say we originally put in 345. All right, and it's coming up with about 0 0.97. It's saying that the, the, the target power for 345 is... Um, 272, but we know the person's going to run faster because their running effectiveness is, is uh, higher than that normally. So we come back here and we're going to fine tune it. We know what the answer is already. Um, and that's 339.50. Boom. That makes this right, and we can see that it corrects the, uh, the power. The power, because the duration is a little bit shorter, the power went up to 275. Uh, so that's the calculator and it's easy to build at home and allows you to uh, use uh, some of these known variables that you collect in your training and racing data um, and fine-tune a uh, race power estimate. Um, let, me, let me give you one more. Let's say this runner was going to run a 10,000 meter race and we're um, doing the same little fudge factor here. Uh, to because their their duration or their their distance is usually reported a little bit long. Um, because it's going to be a shorter race, I'm going to bring this down at Rigel exponent down to uh, minus zero eight. And let's say I mean I have no idea. Let's let's say they're running effectiveness for their. Uh, half marathon power, uh, longer tempos. Let's say that is uh, 1.00, um, 1.00. Um, so let's let's see, I'm just gonna start here and see what 39 minutes uh, produces. So 39 minutes is way too fast um, for this, this runner. Again, we didn't change FTP, that's not changed. We changed Rigel exponent a little bit because um, it's a sh little bit shorter race, um, and uh, we changed the input on the, the distance. But let's let's go back and go until we get to um, 1.00. So let's go 42 minutes. Still too high. Um, 44 minutes. Still too high. 46 minutes. Two fast or too slow I should say 45 very close 45 and uh, that's uh, we're gonna go back here we're gonna make this 44 uh, 50 it's a little bit a little bit on the fast side so we're gonna change this and make that 55. Before. There we go. All right. So um, 
again, I just I plugged all the, the, the uh, information and a, a good guesstimate for the time, but since I know the running effectiveness the runner might be running at, I could now come back and, and play with his time until I get the running effectiveness here. Then I know 315 watts is the target for this, this particular runner. Um, sometimes you bracket, and you're, maybe you're not sure it's going to be 1.0, maybe it's uh, 0.99, so okay, what if it what if it's 0.99? We know it's going to be uh, slower, so we'll go this way. Um, 45. 30 up here. Uh, 0.96. Oh. Pretty close. Uh, there we go. So that's pretty close. So uh, if they're running at uh, 0 0.99 running effectiveness, then the power is going to be 314 watts. Time should be about 4520. So uh, there you have it. Uh, there's the calculator that I use to really do the fine tuning. Uh, you sort of need to, to have an idea what the running effectiveness might be for that race. Or at least uh, you know pretty close that you can bracket it. Um, stride weight, the the distance, the time. Again, you're, you start off with a best guess, and you fine tune by adjusting that time to get the running effectiveness right. You need to know the CP. You need to have an Rigel exponent. You can also bracket Rigel exponents and get get this uh, get some uh, estimates from that. But there you go. That's the uh, the uh, calculator.